Hello everyone and welcome to Electrosonics webinar on how to bring a roller coaster wow factor to your customer briefing centre. First of all, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to join us today. So my name is Gemma Fabian and I am one of Electrosonics marketing team based over in the UK. So I'm going to be fielding your questions today. So please feel free to shoot questions over as and when you think of them throughout the session and we will do our best to answer as many as we can at the end of the uh, webinar. So before I get started, um, I was going to go over a few housekeeping points. Okay, so today's webinar is going to run for approximately 30 to 35 minutes. Uh, it is being recorded and following the session, you will receive an email from us and this will have a link to both the slides and the recording itself. So as I said, you know, we welcome your questions. Please feel free to send them in. If you can use the question and answer box to send in your questions instead of the chat box, then that would be much appreciated. So if you think of a question later on, um, don't worry, you know, just email us um, at the email address listed there, which is the contact us electrosonic.com and we will respond directly to you. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to my colleagues, uh, Alex Wester and Sean McChesney, who are going to show you how you can bring a roller coaster wow to your corporate spaces. So over to you, Alex. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Alex Wester, and I'm the Demand Center Manager for Electrosonic, based here in Cleveland, Ohio. Today's presenter is Sean McChesney. Sean is our experienced technology consultant based in the San Francisco Bay Area. He graduated from the University of Tampa with his bachelor's degree and received his master's in entertainment technology from Carnegie Mellon University. Sean has been with us at Electrosonic for more than five years and has worked on projects such as the One World Observatory, San Francisco 49ers Hall of Fame, and the Warner Brothers Studio Tour. He's been a key part in a number of our projects and we're really excited he's able to share some advice with us today. We're also joined by Gemma Fabian, who is a marketing manager based in the UK and has been with Electrosonic for more than seven years. Gemma and I will be fielding all of your questions, so please, again, feel free to send over as many questions as you want, um, and we'll try to answer uh, as many as we can at the end of the webinar. So at Electrosonic, we design, build, and support innovative technology solutions that create lasting experiences where people live, work, and play. We're a leading audiovisual and technology professional services company that has delivered world-class experiences for over 50 years across museums, theme parks, visitor centers, and the corporate enterprise. We offer technology design consulting, building integration services, and lifecycle services across the globe for clients such as Bloomberg, Visa, Universal, and Disney. Some of our projects you can see here, um, we've worked on the London Mithraeum Bloomberg space, the Sheikh Abdullah Al Salam Cultural Center in Kuwait City, the Transformers ride at Universal Studios, the Warner Brothers Studio Tour in Watford, the Evershed Sutherland Auditorium in London, and also the Visa Innovation Center in London. This webinar aims to give you a brief overview of the core principles we have learned from our work in the attractions industry and how you can use these same methodologies to make your everyday business environments more exciting, just like a theme park. The webinar is packed full of project examples and case studies to feed your imagination and will present ideas on how to use space as your canvas to provide a one-to-one -one experience that leaves a lasting impression with your audience. So earlier this year, we surveyed over 800 participants in the corporate enterprise sector to find out what it meant to them to create a memorable experience in a customer experience center. And we would like to briefly share some of the results here. For example, 48% of respondents found that the best format for an experience center is a hybrid approach between a physical and virtual space. 51% of respondents indicated these experiential spaces are the most effective areas to support their brand strategy. Our job is to help you tell your brand story through technology and to help you engage your customers from beginning to end, immersing them in your brand. These positive experiences help to ensure your audience makes an emotional connection with your brand 
and ultimately converts these relationships into sales. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to Sean, who will take us through the rest of today's presentation. Thank you, Alex. Hi, everybody. My name is Sean McChesney, experienced technology consultant with Electrosonic. Today, we're, uh, we're going to be focusing on what it means to create a memorable experience. What are some methods and concepts that you can use in your space? And therefore, we want to start by talking about space. Space is your canvas. Uh, every office, every theme park, every, every corporate building has its own footprint and it is unique in its own special way. What we really want to help our customers do is understand how is that space used and what's the right type of technology to enhance the space and help you tell your story. We've kind of broken down a memorable experience into four categories. The first being a good first impression. As we all know, you only have one opportunity to create a good first impression. So how do we use technology to enhance the first sight, the first sound, the first smell that your guests have when they walk into your space? The second component is immersion. It's what we're gonna be focused on today. How do you bring guests into your space and suspend the disbelief and have them truly engaged into your brand and your story and your offering? The third is interaction. How do we have your guests come into the space and drive the experience? How do they leave their impression on your building? How do they help uh, create content or experience the content that you have to offer? We can look at two forms of active interaction, physically touching a screen to move through content or passive interaction, simply Im imposing onto the space because you are there, because you are a presence within the room. And the fourth component, which is really a common thread through all of this, is storytelling. We like to look at the example of the hero's journey, commonly known as the Star Wars saga, um, where your guest is the hero and you as the host are there to take them on their journey through your space to learn more about your brand and eventually come to the conclusion that they want to work with you. So here we have an example of the Eaton corporate head headquarters in Ohio. This customer wanted to create a impressive first impression. They wanted it to start as soon as guests were driving up to the building, even before they set foot in the place. So then on the back wall, we also have an LED wall uh, driven by content influenced by the guests. So they wanted a way to have managed content make it easy for their guests to interact with the things that are important to the company and help show what matters to those to everyone else in the lobby space. So here we can see in order to make a, a good first impression, we created a four story LED chandelier. That's a large tower. It is 360 degrees around. So it is viewable from outside, but also by guests inside uh, on every single floor of the building. Some other examples we have here is the One World Ob Observatory on the top right and bottom left. This was an interesting use of space to create a first impression, uh, actually inside of the elevator as you ride from the basement to the 102nd floor. The, the customer here wanted a way to tell the story of the creation of not just the new Freedom Tower, but also of Manhattan, a bit about America as a whole. So as you ride the elevator, uh, the elevator walls come to life and what you see is the creation of Manhattan from the 1700s all the way to present day. Again, as you're riding the elevator, you actually see the creation of the building, the steel I-beams and girders coming together, and eventually you end up at the 102nd floor. The important thing here is an elevator is a common space that we're all familiar with. It was about how do we apply technology to make that space different? How do we make it unique? Uh, it is the same, it functions just like any other elevator, but the addition of good visuals and good audio creates a whole new experience, one that is certainly memorable. The most common issue here is when guests get to the top, they forget that they were even riding an elevator. Looking at immersion in a, a more common sense, we look at much smaller spaces. So here on the left, we have Amore Pacific, which is a project in Korea. 
the customer here wanted to bring guests into a room and fully immerse them uh, in the more common traditional sense. So it starts out as being digital artwork on the walls, eventually livens up in his floor to ceiling projection, fully surrounding the guests into the space, into the story of the brand. In the top right, we have a corporate elevator lobby in New York. This space was uh, a kind of rather cold, polished concrete area where we wanted to come in and use technology to enhance the space and help tell a story. It does appear to just be color that you see on the ceiling, but each of those colors are actually driven by data points. So this does a number of things. It helps the customer tell the story. It shows their reach and their growth, but it also uh, creates a space that has content which is dynamic and it's ever changing. So it's about creating a repeat experience. Uh, so every time a guest comes into this lobby, it is a brand new piece of content. And again, they're immersed into what do the colors mean? What does it represent? And they're eager to learn more about the brand. We've looked at some small spaces, but we can also do immersion on a large scale. Here we have the Tom Bradley International Terminal at LAX. It's a 15,000 square foot space, but the customer wanted the guests to feel immersed in travel, immersed in the, the terminal, uh, and not be you know, bored looking for another outlet to plug their phone into. So on the, in the center image, we see a large clock tower. It is four stories tall. Uh, it plays every hour, and it's driven by how many flights are coming in, how many flights are leaving. It's all real-time data that's driving this content. In the center photo, we see large pillars of LED. Those are actually driven by the presence of people around them. The more people, the faster those pillars will move, the more the content changes. So as guests move through the space, they slowly become more immersed on different levels. Uh, they begin to see the different levels of interaction. So you'll often see smaller children running by to make the grass blow, to make the pillar spin, while their parents being in the space observing that are also uh, participants in that interaction. So bringing it back down to scale, what does this all mean for your customer experience center? So when your guests come in, how do you get them immersed into their space? There's lots of different ways to do that. We've seen examples of LED technology, interactive touch tables, for example, at the Eaton Center, interactive displays, which are more common. We're all familiar with that on the walls. But it's about how do we use the technology to enhance the space to help tell your story. The Cox Communication Center is a good example of that. So this old lobby, again, lots of polished concrete, lots of pillars. It was uh, described as being cavernous. They wanted to create an experience where the lobby itself was probably the most exciting portion of the building. So we looked at wanting to get away from a traditional rectangle. So what we did was we looked at different form factors of technology. As you can see here, we have large columns, lots of portrait displays. It's a lot of touch interaction. Uh, you can see in the bottom middle photo, it is a large touch wall to allow guests, while they're waiting for their meeting to happen, to go through and explore the story of Cox Enterprises, all of the different elements of their business, their brand, their history, their community outreach. One of the coolest things about this space is actually a, a small studio where they've allowed for guests, visitors, but also employees to tell the story of their connection to the brand. Guests walk in, they have their photo taken, they write a bit about how long they've been a customer, how long they've been an employee, and what's important to them about their relationship with the customer or with the brand. And then that content is shown at, on the pillars you see here on the left. So they actually created a system to allow their customers to help create new content for them. So how do we go about doing this? We like to look at a design process where we start off defining the strategic intent. We wanna know who the users are of the space, whether it's different markets or different product groups within your company. We wanna understand what the goals are, what the objectives are for you to educate your customers on, and what are the needs of the client? What are the methods by which you need to 
pitch your story? What is What are the tools that you need to use in order to uh, give examples, give product demonstrations? And then once we understand all that is really when we begin the experiential technology design. We help understand what is the right technology to enhance your space and enable you to better tell your story. We will then partner with third party subject matter experts, uh, whether it's content or lighting or architecture or the construction companies. We want to make sure we bring all those key players to the table as early as possible. So everyone is understanding of the central goal and working towards a clear objective. We will then start to help you customize your space. This could be brand new construction or it could be a retrofit of an existing space. Uh, lots of companies have you know, existing buildings, but they're always looking for new, fresh ways to bring technology into the space and enhance what they already have. We take the same uh, approach to our design process, whether it is a new build or a retrofit. Once we understand how all these groups are going to work together, how the technology is going to communicate, how it will be used, how it will be presented, that is when we then begin to execute and install your new experience, your new system. So some of the main key considerations we have, uh, we definitely wanna make sure we define your audience and the purpose of the center. Um, we have a lot of customers who come in and they, they've seen a large LED wall at a trade show and they say, we want a large LED wall. We will wanna back up and understand what is the purpose of that LED wall within your space. What's the purpose of your space? Who's your audience? And making sure that we understand that first. We then wanna plan out the content and the story and understand what are all of those uh, storylines through your hero's journey, through your guidance of your customer, through your space. And mainly engage the right team from the beginning. Make sure you have all the right people in the room. Make sure all the scope is covered and everybody's working towards a clear goal. And with that, we'd like to thank you for attending today's webinar, uh, and we would like to open it up to any questions. Okay, thank you, Sean and Alex, um, for that insightful information. Um, I do hope everyone found that interesting and it has given you some ideas and some inspirations for your own centres or lobbies and spaces. So we've had some good questions, uh, so thanks to everyone who sent them in. So we've had questions of very similar nature, so I'm going to start with those. Um, so Sean, um, the presentation showed concepts used in quite large scale projects like the One World Observatory in New York. So how can companies apply these same concepts on a smaller scale? Absolutely. So space and scale are, go hand in hand. And although the One World Observatory had a large elevator and a, obviously a long, ride, a long ride to the 102nd floor, we can create that same type of environment in a room with projection or displays on three walls. So it doesn't necessarily have to be an elevator. It doesn't even necessarily need to be a large room. We can find the right type of technology to make a small space appear to be larger. So with that elevator, it is a very small elevator, but you're looking out and you feel as if you're looking over all of Manhattan. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what we're able to do is match the content and the story with the type of technology to create a space that feels larger than it really is. Okay, great. So another um, popular question is, um, how, how can we design, build and maintain fresh content within a corporate space? Absolutely. So the examples of the Eaton Center and the Cox Discovery space, we created systems that allowed for guests to help create content for the customer. In the example of New York, which is often, a, it, it is a new trend that we're looking towards, is tying content to data points. So there's, everybody is always talking about big data, understanding your business from a data perspective, and turning that data into content and into visuals. What that does is it allows you to operate your business as you normally do and allow the output of that data to forever change the content within the space. Okay, 
Um, so a couple of our listeners um, have asked, uh, what, what are the best practices to future-proof a space like an executive briefing centre? Absolutely. So from a technology standpoint, we work with our manufacturing partners to understand the roadmaps of technology, what will be end of life soon, and making sure that we plan to get you the newest equipment, but also the equipment that will last the longest and, uh, and support your space. Additionally, um, we like to look at what is the growth cycle and the refresh cycle of your space uh, and understand building in technology that, this, that enhances the space as opposed to building the space around the technology itself. Okay. And with, with regards to the wow factor, now is, is this something uh, people are asking that can be manufactured or does it just happen? So it's all about story. So you can always manufacture a good, a good wow factor into your space uh, as long as you have a good story that your team believes in and believes is the right story to be telling to your customers. So regardless of the space, regardless of the scale, regardless of the technology, you can wow your customers by creating a memorable experience. And at the heart of that, it is really exceeding expectations and going above and beyond for your customers. What we like to do is use technology as a tool to enhance an experience and enhance a story element in a way that guests don't normally see. Like in the example of Cox, we wanted to break away from the traditional rectangle display on a wall because we're all used to that in our living room and we expect to see that sort of display. So when we broke away from that and went very vertical, we did lots of columns. It was, a, it was better than what the guests expected and it creates that memorable experience. Okay, and just lastly, one more question. Um, can storytelling be bought into a space that's already been manufactured and set up? Absolutely. So regardless of what your space is currently or what the types of technology you're using, if you're looking for a way to enhance that, we can absolutely add new technology into that space as long as it supports your story and your pitch to your customers. What we want to do is understand what are the current pain points that you have in your space? What is it you think would be able to help you tell that story better? And then build a system around those goals to better serve your customers. Okay. Right, well, I think we, we've come to the end of the questions. Um, so if you have any more questions, then obviously we can, we can get back to you um, individually with, um, with the responses. Um, so thanks again to our speakers, um, Alex and Sean, and obviously to our listeners for tuning in. So as I mentioned earlier, you will receive an email from us um, with links to the slide and the recording. Um, and I will also put in some video links um, so you can have a look at some of the projects that Sean was talking about. So the One World Observatory Lift Experience, the Visa Innovation Centre in London, the Cox Communication Discovery Centre, because these videos really bring them to life and they're really going to help you see what, what we achieved there. Um, and then following the survey, uh, you sorry, following the webinar, you will sit, receive a link to a short survey. It is just eight questions long and it will literally take about a minute. Um, but we would be very grateful if you could complete it and send it back to us. It just helps us to keep improving our events and education offerings and just, you know, make sure they're worthwhile and add value to yourselves. So thanks again. Um, and hopefully we will see you again soon on another webinar. Thanks very much. Thank you all.